What's up guys, Tommy Bennett here, and in today's video, we're gonna be discussing why the heck you keep falling. So in this video, I'm gonna go through some very specific examples and situations such as making toe sign and heel side turns. Why do I fall? Going through steeps, moguls, and catwalks. Why the heck do I keep falling? So we're gonna go through specific examples, try to give you guys little nuggets of each of those situations so you can come back, go snowboard, attack the hill, have fun, send it, and stay on your feet. So at any point, you're like, dude, this is super awesome or super in informative or entertaining, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you agree, disagree, or if you feel like I miss anything, let me know in the comments below. All right, let's go. We did it! That only took me 36,000 tries. Woo! The very first situation we're gonna be talking about is doing your heel side and toe side turns. And this is more geared towards the beginner snowboarder or somebody who's just ripping around and you keep catching an edge, you're not sure why. So for the most part, an easy way to think about our turns is in the shape of a C. Now it's very important that we're able to start on our uphill edge. Then we gotta turn our snowboard to go down the fall line. And then we gotta finish by going across the fall line again. So essentially this becomes a three step process. We got the initiation, we got the control, and we got the finish of our turn. So let's just think about it as step one, step two, and step three. Now, what a lot of people do is they get very impatient or they get very scared, so they skip step two. Essentially, you're going from a heel side edge directly to the toe side edge, and you're not actually distributing your weight properly. You're not getting your board down the fall line. You're not actually making the edge change, and you're not leaning uphill. So you gotta make sure that you're doing step one, step two, and step three. Just so you guys know, I'm not excited about this at all. What do you guys think? Should we go even faster? Keep that edge up so you're not catching an edge and making sure you're having a good day. Now going from my heel side edge, I kept dumping my edge too soon because I was not doing the step one, two, three. So I was trying to go heel side and then I forgot the step two. Now the other big challenge that people have when they're making those turns and the example that I had was I started on my heels and I transitioned to my toes really fast. And what I kept doing is I kept pressuring both of my feet really aggressively, causing my board to tilt, which resulted in a, a carved turn. But it's like riding a bicycle at 0.0001% like speed, mile per hour. All of a sudden you have no balance because you have no momentum. But what you keep doing is you keep slicing the snow, you lose your momentum, you lose your balance, or your toes catch because it's so soft. So what you need to do is you need to actually smear your turns. Imagine that your board is a knife and all of this snow is peanut butter and so when you're doing that very basic first turn, you're gonna smear the snow so that you prevent that carve when you should be skidding. The next thing we're gonna get into is starting to get a little bit more advanced. So I'm gonna try my best to fall as best as I can. Make it look realistic, but not die, and hopefully don't scare Sean. 
rip. The next big common problem is you're out here on this beautiful, open, freaking fantastic run and you start to go fast and you're starting to fall down. So what ends up happening is a lot of the times is that you have about 75% of your weight towards the tail of your board, your lead shoulder is open and you're in this very weak position. Yes, it's effective. Can you go from point A to point B? Yes, but does it have as much control as possible? Now, a nice little analogy for you would be, think about driving your car and the wheels are turning in the front. Pretty easy, pretty maneuverable, right? But think about a ginormous boat where the rudder's in back and you make these slow turns. Well, yeah, can you turn totally? But if I'm navigating uh, around people, around objects or trees, it makes it really tough. So body position is gonna be a big deal. So as you're in this like really far backseat position, you may be picking up a lot of speed. You're not able to control or manage your speed. And either you're sitting your butt down, you're falling over or you're skidding out or you're just trying to stop as best as you can. Well, the best thing to be able to do is manage your speed before you start going too fast but it also stems from having a strong body position. That body position is your lead shoulder perpendicular to your lead foot, allowing you to anticipate your turn. So every time I make a toe side turn, I wanna point my shoulder in that direction. As I make a heel side turn, I wanna point my shoulder in that direction, along with doing something called knee steering. So if you're looking for another video on how to be more awesome at steering and five body positions that are not awesome for steering, go ahead and check the video up here. It's gonna also be linked in the description below, but you wanna be in a nice, strong position so that you can manage your speed. You're not fearful, super back seat and making really slow turns. Cause if I'm making slow turns, I might run into something. So right there, I started going fast. I started going backseat. I started panicking and I got, I just got to sit down. I got to stop my speed, try not to die. But in the process, kind of got wrecked. What's up, little ripper? What's up, dude? Hi. 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 How's it going? This is my friend, Ollie. He's amazing. He freaking crushes it. He's another snowboard coach. He's amazing. Um, looks like they're sending backflips today, right? Are we sending backflips today? You gonna wipe? Oh. Oh yeah, it was in So we gotta hit her up. We gotta watch this for a minute. This is absolutely sick. The future of snowboarding is strong. Big shout out to Ollie. He's the man. Hi right, guys. So the next thing we're gonna be diving into is riding on steep terrain. And how the heck do we keep falling? And how do we stay on our feet? Let's go. So we got a very super crazy steep run. So the most common problem that ends up happening is people will go so flipping fast and then they wanna slam on the brakes and they put themselves in a body position that allows them to put a high edge angle, but then their center of mass is so far leaning back that they just slip out and then you're cooking down the mountain. So we wanna make sure that we're in a strong body position. So I'm gonna give you guys an example of how people fall and then more importantly, how you don't fall and how we're able to ride this steep terrain, how we're able to put our brakes on without dying, because that's the goal. Alrighty guys, so we're trying to do our best to make this look as dramatic as possible, but the snow conditions are so soft and so favorable that we're able to create a lot of friction, dig into the snow and stop without actually falling over, slipping out or dying. But I hope you guys get the point in the video. What keeps happening when I fall over is that my belly button goes so far back that I create a high tilt, but I just lean over too much. So the goal is to be able to keep your belly button directly over your heel side edge. You wanna sink down by flexing your knees, getting your belly button lower, staying in a nice position, 
creating a high edge angle, but you're not allowing your body to fully tilt over where you fall over. You're more in this position. You're gonna see there that I'm able to stop really flipping fast, but I'm not dying every single time. Now, you guys may be familiar with what a catwalk is. If you're not, essentially, it's an access road that takes you from point A to point B, but a lot of the times it's a beginner route because it's nice and mellow, it's flat, it's not super steep, and it's a nice way kind of around a lot of the gnarly terrain. Now, that brings me to my point that a lot of times that these access roads slash catwalks are really flat. Obviously, that's the design of them. So us as snowboarders, we do need momentum to keep ourselves up. And then if I'm trying to slow down because it's so flat if i put too much tilt and too much angle i slow down really really fast now if i don't have a lot of speed to begin with well i'm just going to keep stopping keep stopping and that's not fun but then we also learned that if i want to go faster i need to bring that toe side edge down closer to the ground well guess what happens we catch an edge so i want to give you guys a little bit of tactic on how to manage your speed on catwalks and prevent you from catching that notorious edge So when riding catwalks, what I like to do is point my board down the mountain so that I'm able to pick up a little speed. But you're gonna also notice that I just make very subtle shifts of my board across the fall line, bring it back, keep my momentum, shift it, bring it back, shift it, bring it back. Also you're gonna notice that my lead shoulder and my eyes are pointed down the fall line. As my board rotates, I'm able to bring it back that much easier because the upper body's pointing in that direction. If I turn my shoulder and my whole eyes, front of my body, my shoulders, everything's facing back uphill, it's really easy to like turn or even spit out like switch and then get twisted and stuff. It gets crazy. So make sure you're keeping your eyes up. Now, some of you guys are all about the mogul life and most snowboarders are not, but there's gonna be times where you vibe and you hanging out, you go down this run to look sick and you end up in a mogul run. So let's discuss some of the most common challenges and like falls that you take in a mogul run. And then obviously I wanna give you the solution to that as well. So we're gonna dive into it. So the very first thing is you just don't choose your line. You literally just snowboard down. Your eyes are looking at your feet. You're not anticipating what the heck is going on. And either you catch a lot of air and you're skimming across like a rock, skipping on water and you just have no control, or you slam into a mogul. You get stopped, dead stopped, and you start flipping. So then your board dead stops, but you don't. You start flipping, you start rocking, you start rolling, and, it, and it's not sick. So that's gonna be our most common problems. Now, the easiest way to manage moguls is simply by going to the side of the run. Most of the side of the runs actually are pretty mellow because people are scared of the trees, so don't run into a tree. That's gonna be next. But you wanna go to the side of the runs, also slow it down a little bit. Also, you can do this thing called early edge engagement, which allows you to turn your snowboard faster so you can manage your speed from sooner. Now, it's very important to be able to have some awesome turns because when you're in the moguls, they're very tight. They're very specific of where you can and cannot turn. I mean, you can turn anywhere, but it may end up leading you into getting you know, more falls. So if you're looking for a video on specifically how to rock and roll and kill it in the moguls, go ahead and look up here. Also looking down in the description below, I have a fire video with a special guest who is another sick YouTuber uh, who gives us some cool inputs. So uh, check that out. They're scared of the moguls. then I was able to make some smooth controlled turn. I was able to get my board across the fall line while managing my pressure. And I'm able to move quite dynamically allowing myself to manage that pressure. So moguls can be really fun if you can manage them. A lot of people go ride trees so they can get some pow turns in. But in general, I just like riding trees because it's new, it's exploratory, it's so fun but y'all keep getting wrecked in the trees. So we're gonna discuss our common problems when it comes to riding these sick trees, exploring and having a good time. 
So when it comes to rotting trees, one of the biggest things that a lot of people are doing wrong or less awesome is that their eyes are either looking down at their feet so they cannot anticipate what is coming. You gotta be able to anticipate. You gotta keep your eyes up. But then if you do keep your eyes up, you're so fixated on the tree that all your energy goes into it. So the best thing that you can do is keep your eyes up and look beyond or around the tree. That is gonna be a big deal. What that allows you to do is anticipate what's coming up. Your focus is on making those turns and you're not making the trees a big deal. It also goes back into being able to turn and manage your speed. If you're making very long gated turns, probably not going to work in the trees. Oh no! All right, well that didn't count because uh, it's not a tree. Love you, tree. No trees were harmed filming this video. Just me. So the moral of the story is you just don't want to be so focused on it that you're running into it and that's the whole like your existence is this tree, right? So go around, you know, just vibe, go flow, but keep your eyes up, keep your body position strong, look beyond. And let's go to the next one. Now we're in the park. When it comes to the park, it can be very finicky because there's so many different obstacles. Every time you go from one park to another park to a different resort, there's so many different things about that park that you really gotta understand the park itself. But we're not gonna dive into the park etiquette because I have a video. I literally just released it. Check it out, it is fire. I put so much extra work. My editor, Matt, went the extra mile. It is a fire video. So make sure you check that out. It's gonna be linked in the description below. It's also gonna be up there. So with the most common thing about going on boxes is that you're spinning and you're lifting up your board to create an, uh, an, a tilt or an edge. And as soon as you do that, you literally are gonna slip out, get wrecked. I was trying to be dramatic there and actually kind of like tweaked my shoulder because I like put my hand down because you're like trying to brace the impact and it just, it, it's, it's very violent. So the next thing you wanna do is make sure you distribute your weight evenly between the nose and tail and distribute your weight evenly between your heels and your toes that you're balanced. Imagine you're on ice. You just wanna be perfectly balanced or else you're gonna slip out. And that's exactly what a, a box is. And then rails are very similar. They're a lot more complicated. I do have a bunch of other videos on the channel if you're looking for rails, more specific stuff. Cool, so stay strong. <laughs> The next thing that we're diving into is going to be hitting jumps. And the most common issues and when it comes to falling jumps is that you're going into it and that your shoulder is open and that you're leaning back. What this causes you to do is to kind of slip out and rotate. Um, and you can either be falling in the air, so you're like leaning back, so by the time you hit the ground, you're already like backseat, or you're rotated to your heels and you're leaning back, and then by the time you land, you land on your heels, then you slip out. So the biggest thing you wanna do is make sure you're taking off in a very strong athletic position and that your eyes are looking where you're going and you're not lifting, you're not leaning too far forward, backwards, toes or heels, very similar to the box. I do have a really sick video on the five most common issues with jumps. Again, it's a really sick video. If you look for more content, Another big common thing that you're gonna see from people is that they think they're flexing their knees, they feel like they're getting low, but they're just leaning over. They're just, they're just bowing down. But us as snowboarders, we don't bow down. So keep your chest up, keep yourself in that strong athletic position and handle it. All right guys, so we got Tucker out here. Tucker's gonna explain what the heck he's doing with this giant torch and this giant rail. What do we got? So first thing we do when we see a rail sticky or you know we get a rumor that it's sticky and not sliding well, come out with a wire wheel, wire wheel it down, make it nice and smooth, get rid of the most of the rust. And then we heat it up with the old weed burner as we call it, get it nice and hot and then melt some wax on top, board wax for that, which is, you know, really consistent with what we're riding on. So it's really nice to get them all juiced up and waxed. You guys heard it here first. And what's sick though, is we were just talking about, my biggest fear is just trying to hop on a rail, do a board side, break a collarbone, right? I'm not trying to do that. So these guys are putting in so much of the extra mile, the extra details. They ride these features all the time. And they're like, oh, they're sticky. Well, instead of just saying it, they do something about it. Thanks, Tucker. Yeah, no doubt. Man. A lot of you guys want to start doing tricks. You want to do spins. You want to impress your friends. You want to put on the gram, whatever it is. And you start spinning and you, you decide to do a sick flat spin out here on the groomer. But then, boom, you catch an edge and you're not stoked. We kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, but we're going to talk about how the heck do we stop 
catching an edge while rotating because it's a big deal, especially when you're trying to like step up your game. Now, when it comes to not catching an edge, it is absolutely critical that your board cannot go down the fall line. Now, it's very important that you have this awareness of where you are in time and space and, and, and uphill and downhill. Now, what you can do is you can use your ankles for the fine motor skill. Essentially, my whole body wants to lean uphill, but then at times I need to lift up my toes extra to keep that edge from catching and sometimes I need to lift up my heels. Now, when I'm rotating, it's also important that I'm not looking straight down because I'm looking straight down, I'm unable to have my perception of the world. It's a lot harder. You close off your point of view, your, your peripheral vision becomes pretty, pretty minimal. So you wanna keep your eyes up, your spine up so that you can see where you're going. You're gonna flex at your knees and then you're gonna use your ankles. You might get dizzy, you might fall over because you think you're gonna puke. That was rough. That was rough. What I got, what I do for you guys, that deserves a thumbs up. I got Patty here. We met her younger sister earlier. Patty is a flipping ripper. So we're gonna go through the jump line with her and then we're gonna focus on one more thing. But let me know if you guys wanna see like some of these rippers, these kids that are absolutely killing it. Patty, how old are you? Nine. What line are you gonna do right now? That's one top five. Wait, that's on Indy. Top five Indy. If I have enough speed, I'll do that five meet. And she also is gonna pick up some of these Killing It stickers. So the next time we're gonna see her, we're gonna give her a little shout out with the Killing It stickers. So if you guys wanna pick up Killing It stickers, you guys wanna support the channel at all, and you guys wanna tag me on Instagram, do that. Everything's gonna be linked in the description. She almost got that cat five. What? She asked me so politely. She's like, hey, Tommy, can I get a killing it sticker? I'm gonna put it on my board. I'm like, dude, that line though. This is one of my athletes, May. She's pretty awesome. All right, so if she gets this 100 foot rail right now, I'm gonna give her 20 bucks. You think she's gonna do it? Got a nice little advanced one here for you guys. So we're gonna do Euro carves, but some of you guys are Euro carving, but you're falling over. Some of my carving videos on the channel are blowing up. So go check those out if you wanna. Now, one of the biggest things when it comes to falling over carving is you're not going fast enough and you have too much edge angle where your center of mass is so far out the outside of the edge that you're just falling over. There is a point where you do have to go fast enough, allowing you to grip and rip the snow so that you stay up. So if you're going too slow you're gonna have a bad day especially well, i mean especially when it comes to like, those carving you're gonna have to send it you know but not over send it we're not trying to send it to the trees uh but just enough Alrighty guys, we're gonna end that there. That was a sick day. I have not fallen that much in the longest time ever. So if you guys are digging the content, you guys found value in that, definitely give it a thumbs up. And let me know in the comments below, did I miss anything? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Should I do a version 2.0, 3, 4, 5, 10? You guys let me know in the comments below. And on that note, nothing but love, we out.